Today we're going to see this uh, example that um, we have in front of us is a two mechatronic system is a, an accelerometer with its um, measuring circuit because the uh, what we have in here on the left hand side is a device that the, where the accelerometer is attached it has a housing and the way it works is you have this mass inside um, that can move and it has a spring and a damper attached to the housing and when you ex when the uh, this body experiences an acceleration obviously by Newton's first law as you know the law of inertia this mass is not going to want to move and in doing so by the input and this not wanting to move compresses this material which is a piezoelectric crystal and in doing so the piezoelectric crystal um, produces a voltage that we need to measure so the I'm going to put some questions and then we're going to um, address those answers one by one first of all how does this operational amplifier work is it a really a transformer is a source what is it um, how should we put together the mechanical part, the piezoelectric part, and the electrical part together? Question number three, what transfer function should we look at? Four, um, can we use the information from the root locus of that transfer function and the frequency response of the transfer function called body plots to give us some important information? And so let's take uh, with those questions one by one so I'll disappear from here and and here's here's the situation this is the mechanical side this is a piezoelectric transformation and here's the electrical side what is important here is that I think it's obvious that we have a simple mechanical system here but what is not so obvious is how we get the signal from here so we can measure what the acceleration is well we understand from what I told you the piezoelectric idea of this you know this material and uh, the way this goes this is a, um, a, this operational amplifier and this little circuit is used to amplify the signal and to to measure the, the acceleration by establishing a relationship between the voltage here and the input so you could see in here we have a mechatronic system in the sense that the transfer function that we will be analyzing is a voltage output while the input is a mechanical motion right is mo is an acceleration so uh, obviously there, there, there has to be here some transformation of units and everything but on on the electrical side the way this works is this device this operational amplifier is not a passive device this thing is externally powered that's what we need to understand and the purpose is in here that the current the input current here is zero you know that elements in and systems communicate with each other with two variables right with an effort and a flow that means a current and a voltage in this case but the idea is to suppress the current and let only the voltage so that this operational amplifier could act as an as the name says as an amplifier so that the voltage would be a would be big enough so we can actually measure that's the purpose what um, most students have difficulties understanding this idea that we suppress the we suppress the um, signal here and yet this is a um, um, 
this is still transforms. Well, the statement I just made is totally contradictory with the idea of power conservation, right? So this thing is not a transformer in the sense because transformers are power conserving elements. This guy is not. So it's some sort of a hybrid, you may say, is, is a different guy. So the, in this case, we have chosen to represent it just as a control source, you know, that, that would amplify the signal. That's one way. Another option would be to do, to do the transformer and then in the MATLAB uh, file, suppress the current that, that will work too however it will not work on the graphics so in the graphics they're gonna they're gonna you're gonna have some challenges in there so the best way and the easiest way that i found how to solve this problem is to um represent it as a control source yeah so um that's why you have it as a source of effort but it has to be only source of voltage, see? That's why that thing has no current, okay? So I, in this case, and in fact, that's what a source is, you know, a source of voltage would have a very minute current, right? Which is appropriate for this. So what is left, uh, uh, what is left at this point for me to do is to begin putting together the entire system and then let's experiment with the different possibilities of our operational amplifier and the different difficulties that we can have with it. So um, I gave you on that write-up the model of the mechanical part which I am going to do first and we could we could do this uh, this model of this of this system and then um, we I think I had it all uh, yeah right here I had it all um, nice and simplified so let's enter this first and then we'll do the piezoelectric transformation and then the circuit okay so uh, let me just um, move it a little down here uh, this way and then I am going to uh, enter this uh, into the Camp G software. Okay? I think we have one running in the background right here uh, so that we can enter this uh, into the Camp G. So I'm just going to put it to the left in there so that uh, we have it in here. Okay. Then we might need to move this to the right a little. I mean, those are the things that, yeah, for purposes of 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 seeing this really well. Um, so now, now we're here, okay? Let's see. Okay. So, in here you have a. Um, source of effort I mean the way it is in here we could we couldn't perhaps mm, mm, the source of effort you could even put it on the under you know so that it would look like it comes from under the ground um, so and then you put the one in here like this and then you have the I element in there this is right here and then we have a C and the R elements in here um, I guess the C is first it really doesn't matter the order in which we do this and then you have the R element in here like this you see so this is th this is this I just chose to put the source on the bottom that's all because I want to um, build the, the piezoelectric transformation to the right 
So I made myself, uh, you know, I left it free on this side. That, that's all I was doing. So in here, mm, we're gonna go and we say, okay, this is my, um, we'll come back again in here to this write up. And uh, we have the, um, the piezoelectric transformation, right? That piezoelectric transformation is in here, see? So this one, we should be able to attach directly over here. I'm just gonna go back again here. And um, we go to the TF element in here, which is right here. And then we say, okay, do this please. And on the other side, we are going to have another one in here, which is like this. Yeah, this would be the um, the piezoelectric transformation as I see it right now. But let's see what we do to connect to the electrical system. And the electrical system is represented over here like that. See? And um, actually in, on this side, we, we are using a zero to connect. Um, because in this case you see what you're saying here um, from the picture from the picture uh, this one yeah you're saying this is a zero right because here comes this current here comes this other one but this one is zero huh? so it is a zero junction that's why we need to represent it like this so I had it a little bit simplified. Yeah, right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is instead of the one directly we connect it to the zero and we implement this bone grab model that is on the left hand side into the Cam G software. And that is so I'm hopefully that I am back in here. I am going to, uh, we need to move this up a little bit because I don't see the delete button. So like, yeah, there you, there you go, I, now I can see it. Mm. So and here we go. Yeah, let's try to see if we can get it back to life. Hopefully we didn't, we didn't affect the, the system in here in such a way, because right now I, we are not seeing the mouse. Um, okay. That's what happens whenever you use that program. There we go. We're finding here. So we have in here delete. Um, and then we're going to put this directly to the zero junction here, like this. And then we have to build the um, uh, other one in here, which is this one right here. And this is seven, according to this drawing that I have in there. I'm gonna try to um, to use the uh, the other one in here. We have a because we need the. Uh, I think we have a zero on the right hand side, right? Right here. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Here we go. And then I'm trying to put the same numbers. And then if you put this SE over here, 
and you do uh, this is this is what you probably did you clicked on this like that and then you didn't think anything of doing that and then you did this so you keep on doing and then you see this all of a sudden this thing is has something funny but I'm going to uh, to tackle that explanation when we um, after we complete the whole thing because that's part of the question you see so in here you have the C element in here and then you have an R element over here yeah you know that everything that is read in cam G is a warning that something is funny well two things are funny here you know this the C element and the this SE so if you don't give it much thought to this you are gonna get stuck here but what we need to do remember the what he was saying is is a signal if it is a signal it's not a true bond why because this F9 which would be the current is zero so this bond in reality does not exist you know this thing is like this and you see you see where I mean this got this element but camp G has the ability to put this one in here like this that it won't affect anything but and the whole system will work fine because this symbol that you have with a with a half arrow in the middle it means it's not a true bond but rather only one of the signals has a value and the other one does is so the moment that we put an AC in there you are saying only the voltage counts that's the message here because like I told you we could have done it this and this one thing to to talk and another one to actually see it let's say let, let me show you what I was trying to say if I do this and I say you know really this thing looks to me that this is a transformer so I just go over here and I said this is a TF really okay so let's let's put it in here and then I connect it here and I connect it wow that even caused other problems but I go over here do you see what I mean why is all red in there the reason is the very same problem this guy is thinks that it, it has the value in there of both signals that's not the case so in this up the conclusion that I'm trying to 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 help you reach is that the operational amplifier is not a transformer in is not a power conserving transformer it is a transforming in the sense only to to change the voltage signal but not the current okay that's why we represent it with an AC so uh, we need to we need to go back to what to, to what uh, we had this 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 is the problem this nine see everything else works fine and the reason that now the TF is red is because TFs in cam G are power conserving elements so it can we cannot do it this way so for that reason we have chosen to represent this as a control source and so we put an AC over here like this this and then obviously the the the, the bond in there this is good enough if you if you um, sorry sorry if you like you can do uh, this so that is exactly as my my bond model there on the left hand side and you do this this is fine okay it's perfectly fine so <coughs> Um, once you go to um, to the to MATLAB, 
then what are we going to do? Then we need the transfer function between E12 and E1. We need a relationship between the output voltage and the input acceleration. That that's the idea. Okay. So um we we what we need to do at this point is to go to to MATLAB and do that. Okay? So let's just um let's just go here to the interface and then we're gonna go to MATLAB. Uh, Okay. Okay, so we have right now the um, bond graph model on the screen and we have also the um, the files that were produced uh, with the from CAMG the question is now, how do we relate this um, voltage on this capacitor to this input acceleration? The concept is pretty simple. The output that we are looking at is E12. And the input is SE1, is E1. So in order to do this, we need to specify the output. We come to the... Um, MATLAB files that we found. Make sure that you're on the CAMGSYM file. And then um, we we will we need to go to the um, binoculars in here and we say would you please find me where E12 is? And click on return here it didn't find and uh, there okay hold on let's see where where are we here maybe let's get it's gonna find e12 in here So now we have produced the the files in here. We are about to find out. We were trying to find out what E12 was. And so we have found where it is. What we need to do is to tell the computer that this is my, my output by suppressing this and activating this uh, CAMGSYM file. Excuse me. Uh, that's where we are right now. CAMGSYM file. Okay, so in here we go output number one. So we suppress we tell this is the one, and this is one in here, and this is one in here. And <coughs> we need to just um, in here we the new version doesn't like the statement simple so we're gonna do without it a uh, new version of MATLAB I mean so now we're ready to run so if we run this the objective is to find the transfer function between E sub 12 and the input bolt a uh, pin put in and so here we go there's the matrices and these are the um, the transfer function matrix that we have it has to um, we have established the transfer function matrix right here. It has one for the first input and one for the second input. But you see the first input you you have to see it in here is SE one. So and the second one is this. So the the one that we really care is this one right here. Um, yeah, right here is this and this is the denominator right here if we give the values then we could obtain the the body plots as well 
but those are the values that uh, we need to enter for all the physical parameters that we have and that's what you need to do in your in your assignment because you are going to come in here and put the values in this where the parameters right there right there this ones uh, and we could see what will happen if we if we set everything to one just for the you know just seeing the uh, the mechanics of it not that it has any significance to the to the problem here but just so that you can see it because you need to enter the values that I give you so um, so we go in here we go uh, in here and say let's just so that you can see what will happen this not like I say I repeat this uh, these are not intended to be values that relate to this particular example but just to the mechanism of uh, of executing and obtaining the transfer functions and the everything here so there are th these are numerical values now there's the transfer function like you see in here we care about this one and the computer as you go in here automatically has gone and say okay we want the body plots the root locus plots for both transfer functions these are the one that for the yours this would not be and then we have also done the step and impulse impulse response for both of them so so that that is that's to show you how we would be able to obtain the the output of the voltage in relationship to the input so